I'm William, a student at ANU, and today I'm talking with uh, Heritage Architect and National Trust Council member, uh, Mr. Eric Martin, and uh, head of the new ANU Centre for Heritage and Museum Studies within the School of Archaeology and Anthropology, Professor Laura Jane Smith. It's nice to be speaking to you today, uh, Eric and Laura Jane. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Thank you. There have been a number of conferences with the future of heritage as the theme lately. This seems to be prompted both by uncertainty about the future and the creation of a national heritage strategy. Do you think Australia needs a, a national heritage strategy? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's very important to have a strategy that, that can be used as, a, as a, 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 a basis for debate and discussion. However, I think the current strategy is very much stuck within the authorised heritage mm -hmm. discourse. That is, it, it is incorporating a sense of heritage that is very traditional very much based within the framework of, of great men doing, you know, great white deeds. And uh, I, think, I think the strategy re really needs to rethink its definition of heritage to be a lot more inclusive of um, multicultural Australia, to present a sense of heritage that speaks to Indigenous Australia, that, in, you know, incorporates the diversity of, of, of historical and contemporary uh, experiences in, in this country and, and setting up a, a, a strategy that incorporates a, a traditionalist sort of view of heritage won't do that. Yeah, I, I actually think that the, the national strategy is really fundamental, but I also think it needs to go another step further in respect to actually the states and territories need to then develop their own heritage strategy, and really it needs to come down to the local government level for a heritage strategy as well, because the, the bulk of our heritage is, is at the local level, and we actually need to engage with the communities to actually form a critical mass in respect to this whole heritage strategy development. So it needs to fit within the legislative framework, it needs to fit within the, the structure that exists at the moment, and I think it's fundamentally important. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, I think it's, it's, it, there is an assumption within the traditional understandings of heritage that heritage is national, and that's, and that's where it should be. But, you know, heritage is very much uh, something that is, is engaged with at a local level, and it's just as important. Local, local heritage is just as important as national heritage, her, uh, national heritage is informing people's sense of place mm. and sense of belonging. So yes, I'd agree. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And so, uh, as a new national heritage strategy, what can we learn from past uh, past efforts in this in this field? Well, I actually think it needs to. Uh, the heritage strategy probably has several focuses at the moment. One is the community engagement, one is innovation, and one is actually just setting uh, an agenda at the, at the federal level. Where I think it needs to, while well, you may accept that as a, as a framework, I think you really need to delve into a lot more detail. One of the things that came out very strongly was to actually get the, accept the current financial restrictions. It's very difficult to change that, but work mm. within it and work, get the strength within the community and get the community directly involved and then build the strength from that point of view. And I think that's one of the things that came out very strongly was the community involvement and engagement is really fundamentally important. Mm. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. But that, ha I mean, that has to be resourced as well. It's, 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 it's. You run the risk also of letting it go to the community, devolving it down to the community, but without those the resources to to allow the community to to be engaged, to to make the decisions that it needs mm. to make, to to develop its own sense of heritage. Um, it, it, nothing will happen. The the the, the authorised understandings of heritage will will remain. So I think it's it's very important that. Yes, communities are, are engaged, but they're engaged in a, in, in a way that allows them to actually do something. Mm. Okay, very interesting. Um, so it seems like really uh, devolving is really a core, uh, one of the core features of this, or taking it down to the people who are making the uh, decisions on the local level or community, community engagement, that kind of thing. Um, but beyond that as well, what specifically would you see should be the features of such a strategy and how, how important is the manner and the timing of its implementation and the way that it's done? Oh, look, timing is, is really important. Um, it was, it's interesting that we've, we need to reflect on where we are with, with heritage and whether it's um, the whole issue of intangible heritage and other aspects of it need to be strengthened and better understood. It was even raised the issue about whether the Borough Charter is is the right way and whether heritage has been um, its current situation is, is a situation of its own current of previous success and what we need to do is to really 
focus on how we can actually build on what structure exists and strengthen it and strengthen it with whatever level of um, commitment, whether it be a bureaucratic commitment at the state and territory levels or whether it's community, or the NGOs uh, do have a fundamental role to play in all this as well. And somehow we've got to build a strength from those groups and then, if you like, um, get an acceptance at, a, at an administrative level that heritage is important at the grassroots level, and that will give strength, a new strength, I think. Yeah. Mm, it's, right. it's important for, for, for the strategy to be inclusive, but to be inclusive in a way that en engages debate uh, at grassroot, grassroots levels with you know, traditional national understandings of heritage. I mean, to, mm. to ask that, that um, communities be included into the national program, I think misunderstands the nature of heritage and, and the importance of heritage. There, there has to be a re definition of how we're defining heritage, one that is driven by debates, social and, and, and public debates about what heritage means, what history means in Australia, what the legacies of that history and heritage have been. To, so to, to, to rethink what we mean by heritage and, and what it means for um, people at different levels, at the national level, community level, and individual level and so on, familial level mm. and so on. And to add to that is really to really articulate the value of heritage and the value of heritage um, should be seen in as broad as possible ways, whether it be an energy related issue, whether it's a tourist related issue and I think there is actually a not a full appreciation of the real value of heritage and the contribution that heritage makes to our society as a whole. Um, mm. It is a positive contrib contributor to that whole process and I don't think that's been emphasised enough, particularly in the the tourist side of things and also mm. particularly in the um, that really is the energy and the values are there and need to be appreciated and understood and that will come through at a strategic level of articulation and definition. Mm. Very interesting so so really placing more emphasis and value uh, on the value of the heritage but also as, as you suggested uh, Professor Laura Jane that um, it's it's important that we reformulate the way that we see heritage so one of your uh, particular interest is the the way that the story contextualizes heritage mm. and that heritage isn't just physical objects but that it has to sit in its historical place mm. and it has the stories and the stories are intangible but mm. they are a core part of the heritage so would that be one of the core features oh absolutely think? I think I think that um, we need to understand that heritage is is a process it's it's a it's a cultural performance it's not just the things that mm. we value it's how people use those things. Uh, that that is actually important. Heritage is a it's a it's a popular cultural process in which the past is made present and the past is used to help us navigate the the, the issues that we face in the present. They help us to explore those values that we want to take forward, those mm. values that we want to forget or, or or relegate to the past. It helps us to to explore the historical narratives and cultural narratives that we want to to utilize in the present and 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 to use for planning for for the future yeah. so it's 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 not just about preserving historic buildings or um you know pretty landscapes or whatever it may be it's a it's a it's a process in which people governments communities individuals are constantly yeah. remaking or, or re re-remembering the past or utilising the past to, to help them make sense and navigate the present and to make plans for the future. Yeah. So I think it's very important to, 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 to rethink how we, how we engage with heritage because if we, if we allow that that is a process, mm -hmm. then it, 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 it requires us to engage far more fundamentally than we have in the past with communities and, and other individuals who have a stake in how the past is understood and how it's used in the present. Mm. Very interesting. Um, do you, no, you like to add to that? I well, agree. we'll move on yeah. then to uh, maybe I'll put the next question. That um, so speaking of the present and the future, but um, how do you think heritage in particular can help us deal with the uncertainty of the future? And, and what should we be taking forward in particular? What should we have our eye on for that? Well, again, it's about the. It, it's about there is a there is a sense mm. in which we want within the authorised discourse there's a sense where in, in traditional policy there's a sense in which we are saving the past for the future but really we're utilising the past for, to help us as I said before navigate the issues and, and needs of the present. Um, 
the, I think the things that we need to be to be concentrating on are those things that allow us to debate what the past means for the present, not just the good and the great, but mm. you know the, the the dissonant and the contested as well. I think they're very very important in in terms of helping us understand what are the legacies that we've we've taken from from the past. You know what in terms of discrimination, um, prejudices, and so on, as well as those cultural values that that are, are, are more positive. So I think you know it it is those aspects that we need to be concentrating creating on the, the dissonant, mm. the, the debates. One of the key words that came out uh, Tom, was respect. And respect is really important to actually appreciate whatever the, the culture, whether mm. indigenous or other communities or multicultural communities, it's, it's respecting their uh, appreciation of their culture and how that might translate into whatever heritage aspect, whether it be paintings or whether it be other stories or, or structures. It's a matter of a, having a respect and understanding of that and then building upon that and then articulating what is the core components of those, the, those communities and then reinforcing those as part of the, the heritage story. I think that really is important. Mm. Yeah, very interesting. To me, it really appears that you know we need we do need a more nuanced we, pulling a respect in to have a more pluralistic mm. view of it as well, mm. and equally weight the different parts of it. So the dissonance in historical narratives and discourses is really important, which is often uh, missed. Mm. And mm. It has to, the balance probably hasn't been there in the past, and I think mm. that's somewhere where, where heritage practitioners can pick up and learn from is to get the balance between. Uh, the tangible, the intangible, and um, and the respect to make it work. Mm. Yeah, yeah a, a balance between those yeah. things that, that that are positive and those things that are are, are dissonant. And and yeah, I think respect is is is, is a very important word. As is acknowledgement, a mm. acknowledging what's happened in the past, and 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 using that acknowledgement in positive, respectful mm. ways yeah. to to engage with I contemporary issues. Yeah. Excellent. Well, it's um. It's a fascinating uh, talk, this really. Um, we could go on for <laughs> quite a while with it, I think. Um, but it seems like we're moving, uh, we have the opportunity to move in, a, in, a, in, a, in different interesting directions. And um, I have to say that as a young person, I, I hope that we'll um, be able to use Australia's heritage experience to move into a new heyday for heritage. And with these kind of ideas, I'm sure, I'm sure that we will. I'm sure so, we will. Uh, thank you very much, Eric and uh, Laura Jane. Very much enjoyed talking. A pleasure. Yep, thank you. Thanks very thank much. You. Thank you.